Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're gonna to talk about surge tanks and whether or not one is right for your build. As your build progresses and your engine makes more horsepower, you need to increase the fuel flow available to the engine. Now on most vehicles, it's as simple as installing a high flow aftermarket fuel pump in the OEM fuel pump's place. So you'll just take the OEM pump out, put a high flow pump in, and you're good. Well, as you can continue to increase the power, you may need two or three fuel pumps to meet the engine's demands. Not all vehicles are the same, and due to the fuel tank's shape, you may not be able to fit more than one fuel pump in the tank, or you may not be able to get wiring safely in the tank, or the shape of your OEM fuel tank in such a way that you deal with starvation or cavitation under acceleration or during cornering. So if you're to the point on your build where you're gonna use two or three fuel pumps, there's good aftermarket support for a lot of vehicles that you can buy a fuel pump hanger that will house two or three fuel pumps, and those pumps are gonna be mounted, plumbed, and wired in a safe manner. However, this could create some other problems depending on the fuel tank. One of the problems you could experience with a multi-pump hanger in a factory fuel tank is cavitation or starvation once the fuel level in the tank gets below the top of the factory basket. So if you look down into your gas tank, there's a vessel around the fuel pump and that keeps the fuel around the fuel pump during acceleration, braking, and cornering. Well, the size of that basket was engineered with a factory fuel flow in mind. So if you put two or three fuel pumps down in that factory basket and you don't have the fuel level high enough that the fuel is just flowing down into the basket from the top, then that basket can get dry and it can cavitate during acceleration, turning, or braking. Most late model vehicles are equipped with what they call a fuel pump module. So the fuel pump hanger, the basket, and the fuel level sensor are all engineered into one single component, making it easy to service the vehicle in the field. Now a lot of OEM engineering went into that component and it should be respected. If you alter your factory fuel pump module with an aftermarket high flow fuel pump and that aftermarket high flow fuel pump isn't exactly the same size as the factory pump, you can get into situations where you have a fuel leak inside of the fuel pump module defeating the purpose of upgrading the pump in the first place. If you have a late model vehicle that has a saddle tank where there's a drive shaft running in between two sides of a gas tank and one side of the gas tank doesn't have a fuel pump and the other side of the gas tank does have a fuel pump. They're using a venturi to pull fuel from one side of the tank to the other and altering the fuel flow of the factory fuel pump module can interrupt how that venturi works where you can end up with fuel in one side of the tank and not fuel in the other side of the tank. And I'm not saying the aftermarket can't get it right. I'm just saying do your research when it comes to your specific vehicle before interrupting all that good OEM engineering. One option people will use if you cannot fit more than one fuel pump in the factory fuel tank is to sump the factory fuel tank. So if it's a steel tank, you cut a hole in the bottom of the tank, you weld on an aftermarket sump, and that sump will have a large outlet fitting that will feed a high flow externally mounted fuel pump. If it's a plastic tank, you drill a hole in the plastic tank, preferably in the basket, use a bulkhead fitting, and then you just run a line from the bulkhead fitting to that large externally mounted fuel pump. Either one of these can present some problems. If it's a steel tank that has a liner in it, when you cut and weld on that liner, it can deteriorate, clogging up fuel injectors and fuel filters. And if it's a plastic tank, you've gotta find a sealant that is compatible with gasoline and doesn't deteriorate over time because then you'll end up with a fuel tank that leaks fuel. It's been my experience with sumped factory steel tanks that cavitation gets worse during braking and turns because then you just have a hole in the bottom of this flat vessel and the fuel is free to wash past the hole as the vehicle moves around. If you have a plastic tank and you're gonna do the bulkhead fitting, again, make sure the bulkhead fitting is in the basket. And with either option, the size of the line leaving the fuel tank to go to that large aftermarket fuel pump needs to be matched to the vent of the gas tank. So if you have a dash 12 leaving the gas tank going to your fuel pump, you need to have a dash 12 vented atmosphere so the air and fuel can exchange evenly and that you don't have a situation where the fuel pump can't suck the fuel out of the tank. A second option you have if you can't put more than one fuel pump in your factory fuel tank is to remove the factory fuel tank altogether and move to a fuel cell. Fuel cells are available in universal configurations and custom configurations that can be vehicle specific. They're available in a sump configuration or with a large access door to put multiple fuel pumps into the fuel cell. There are also fuel cells available with bladders inside. So if you have an older vehicle and you want an extra layer of crash protection, there are fuel cells available that can actually make your car safer in the event of an accident. Now let's talk about the obstacles you'll face when fitting an aftermarket fuel cell. 
The shape of an aftermarket fuel cell is often square or rectangular and doesn't just fit inside your vehicle, requiring some cutting to put the aftermarket fuel cell into the car. Since we're talking about the shape of the fuel cell, keep in mind that your factory fuel tank was shaped oddly to fit specifically in your vehicle, offering good capacity or range between fill-ups. When you move to an aftermarket fuel cell, you're often going to shorten the vehicle's range between fill-ups. The next thing you're gonna to have to deal with is the factory filler neck. Right now, you just open the gas door, fill up your gas tank and drive off. With an aftermarket fuel cell, you'll be popping the hatch or the trunk and putting fuel in that way because the factory filler neck does not talk to the aftermarket fuel cell. The next thing would be the factory fuel level sensor. So the factory fuel level sensor that's in your OEM gas tank is designed to work with your factory gas gauge. And as you move to an aftermarket fuel cell, you'll have an aftermarket sending unit and the compatibility of that sending unit in your factory gas gauge is yet to be discovered. So that may be something you may have to work through or the factory gas gauge just doesn't work anymore at all. If you have an aftermarket dashboard, like AEM or Haltech or Motec, those are configurable where you can have an aftermarket sender and have your gas gauge back, but not everyone has an aftermarket dashboard. So keep in mind, if you wanna keep your factory fuel capacity, factory filler neck, and factory gas gauge, it's best to leave the factory fuel tank in the car. Last but not least is crash protection. In a modern vehicle, the OEM gas tank is nestled between the factory frame rails. This offers good protection in the event of an accident. When you put an aftermarket fuel cell in the hatch of a car without a firewall and you have an accident that you're rear-ended, now the driver and everything in this car is doused in flammable liquid. It's a pretty dangerous situation. So think about all of the moving pieces if you're thinking about removing the factory gas tank. Now that we've discussed what seems to be the common approaches, let's discuss the surge tank. A surge tank is a remote reservoir that goes in between the factory gas tank and the engine. It can house one, two, or three fuel pumps depending on your engine's power output. The surge tank is supplied fuel by the factory fuel pump at low pressure and by the return line coming back from the regulator. Once the surge tank is completely full of fuel, it overflows back into the factory gas tank. Because the surge tank is an engineered system that you're just integrating into the vehicle, you don't have to deal with a lot of the problems we discussed earlier in the video. You're not gonna be losing the operation of your factory gas gauge, losing the operation of your factory filler neck, having less fuel capacity with a universal fuel cell, or having additional crash risk with a poorly placed fuel cell. Now I urge you to not downplay some of the problems that we've talked about earlier in this video. It's a slippery slope. If you go through the process of building an aftermarket fuel system only to find out that that large external fuel pump won't operate for long periods of time without overheating, or the drag race car that when you let the clutch out, the fuel pressure goes to 20 because the fuel moves away from the fuel pump, you're talking about having to go back in, spend time and money a second time, instead of just getting to the enjoyment. Now surge tanks are nothing new. My experience with surge tanks goes back around 20 years when I was working with some Australians that they just use surge tanks to solve their aftermarket fuel system problems. In America, at least in drag racing, we hung on heavily to sumped tanks and large external fuel pumps, but that's with a vehicle that's just accelerating in one direction. With drifting growing, road racing growing, it became more apparent that surge tanks were a viable solution because the fuel pumps are always submerged in fuel. As things have progressed and everyone's gained access to CNC machines, surge tanks have gotten a whole lot nicer. What I'm looking for in a modern surge tank is O-rings, not gaskets. I want an OEM wiring solution that has pins, connector, and wiring that's large enough to deal with the amperage of an aftermarket high flow fuel pump over time because I don't want any of that wiring deteriorating. I want care taken from the fuel pump exit to a full flow fitting, making sure that I have what the fuel pump flows available at the engine. I don't want a bunch of restrictions or concessions made in the manifold. And I also would like to have care taken to when the fuel is returning back into the surge tank, it's not aerating the fuel. Now, one of the questions you could be asking yourself is how does one fuel pump supply enough fuel for three fuel pumps? Well, keep in mind, as pressure increases, volume decreases. So your in-tank fuel pump, whether it be the OEM in-tank or an aftermarket in-tank, it's free flowing into the surge tank. So if you had a water hose in your hand or a shower head and you cover the end of the water outlet, pressure goes up, but volume goes down. Same exact thing happens inside your fuel system. Now keep in mind, surge tanks are not for everyone. There are vehicles that have factory fuel tanks that easily house multi-pump configurations and the aftermarket offers good support on multi-pump hangers. 
for those vehicles, you just go that path. If you're dealing with a vehicle that does not have good aftermarket support, does not fit more than one fuel pump well, or has issues with cavitation or starvation, surge tanks can be an excellent option. If you're in the early stages of planning and you wanna discuss a surge tank, or you're dealing with problems with your existing aftermarket fuel system, feel free to reach out, we're here to help.